Hello, hey, and welcome to this installment of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David A. Rushed Vibes Rushing. Woo woo. In the flesh. Ooh, excuse In me. In the flesh. <clears throat> excuse me. In the flesh. Let's get, get that. In the under the weather flesh. Yeah. We think David might have food poisoning. So tonight, normally we have our liqueur of choice. I have my peppermint tea of choice. But I'm battling through for y'all, Vibe Tribe. I'm battling. I told him to cancel. And we can just. She did. We can just post an announcement that, um. He just didn't have it, but here he is. It's Don and Doris. They raised soldiers. <laughs> literally. Yeah, actually, literally. One of us enlisted in the army. Yeah. One of my three, one of my two brothers. So they do. Raise it wasn't soldiers. me, though. It wasn't. No, it definitely wasn't him. Um, so he's drinking peppermint tea, which I made for him. And I am in honor of the last recording of Black History Month. I am drinking Amarula. Say hello. This is a South African liqueur from the Marula tree, which is a fruit that elephants actually consume. So it's got this whole story. Um, I was, my mom introduced it to me. She was flying to Ghana on South African airlines. They gave her a sample. She like gave this huge testimony about how good it was. I came and fa- I hunted it down because um, I saw it at a duty free shop, but didn't want to buy it at a duty free shop. And I was, you know, really, I really, really wanted it. Came, I went to Virginia actually um, for work and stumbled upon it in an ABC store. No need to question why I was in an ABC store while I was working in Virginia. Um, so I bought it, and then it turns out they actually did have it here in the Charlotte area. So if you like cream liqueurs, I highly recommend it. I uh, either water it down a little bit with ice or vodka. So um, I guess watering it down with vodka is not actually – it's vodka it down. But it is it – is, it can be on the sweet side if it's consumed at room temperature. But shout out to South Africa. South Africa is doing some great things. They got whiskey. They got wine. They got Amarula, so, you know, shouts. And for, for the motherland in this Black History Month, this is me honoring home-ish. Shout out to home. Shouts. For all of us. So, motherland. besides your potential food poisoning, what's new with you? Yeah, I don't know why food poisoning, like, I feel like it happens way too frequently to me. Mm-hmm. Assuming that this, that's what this is. Uh, it better be. There's really not much <laughs> else going yeah, around. I hope it's not the 19. Um, and yeah, you're right. There's not, there's not much else going on. As I don't, I don't frequent a lot of people. I have, we have our bubble. So it's not like, you know, I, could, I come into contact with a lot of other people. So you know, everybody's home now. That's why everybody's like, oh, the flus, flu cases have dropped dramatically. So it's really weird. Um, but Someone in our bubble had a stomach virus. So I guess uh, those are still kind of circ- like, I mean, other things are still circulating, but COVID is just kind of like taking priority in terms of the virus. To ca- it's the it virus. Sure. Not really. Um, yeah. So I, I, I got food poisoning one time. We went to uh, New York for our wedding anniversary, believe it or not. Right. Was that the time I got uh-huh. sick or was it another time? Uh-huh. And um, went to visit Jessica's aunt. And she brought home some Chinese food from the Bronx. I'm not trying to put this on anybody. It just that just happens to be where the Chinese food was from. That happens to be where they, where she lives. And um, don't disrespect. No, nah, I'm just uh, saying I I was in the I was in the Bronx when I uh, suffered from from food poisoning, and she offered me some. She offered all of us some. I, I partook. And, uh, it was, it was, it was so weird because as soon as I, I swallowed the first bite, I knew that there was something, something was wrong. Cause my, my body just was like, yo, this ain't right. So I tried to wash it down with a Coke and I was okay for like maybe an hour. And then 
like the next 12 hours mm-hmm. I was in and out of the bathroom. It was bad. It was, it was rough. Uh, and you know, like after you throw up like two or three times, you, there's like nothing left in your body. So you're just throwing up bile. Um, and it was not pleasant. Uh, and then we had to get up in the next morning and very early and commute to the airport and then via fly train via train and then fly home. And uh, not fun. I think I sl- we got home and I slept for like he was out probably for like fed the fi- I probably slept for the fifteen hours. I got the fifteen hours back that I was up um, throwing up and solace and luckily was- only. But what, one good thing about food poisoning, and I've heard that you can get it like out of both ends. And luckily, I I was fortunate enough to only have it out of the the front. So yeah, that, I guess if there's a silver lining to there's getting that. food poisoning, that's that's what it is. Uh, so from that trip, we actually packed up the rest of the Chinese food. Cause I don't know that at what point we realized it was probably after we got home that we realized that it was the Chinese food that got us sick. Yeah. I thought it was so, African food that I ate. I was like, man. And it was not. And my first aunt felt I, so. The first time I come out here. My aunt felt so bad cause she thought her food was I'm already in sick. New York. I don't like being in New York. And, and what made it worse is we, the first night we got there, we ate some just some amazing food that my aunt had cooked. And Salas threw up. Yeah, Salas got sick. And Salas never, never gets sick, never throws up. What I speculate is that she, the food was so good that she just ate too much. Yeah. Because um, she, she was, she wasn't even two at the time. I think her second birthday was coming up. Um, and she was just, she was like, she could not eat enough. So, I think her stomach was just like, I don't, I can't digest this. And, you know, we're all in bed. We're, we're asleep. She sits up, just hurls all over my aunt's bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was like, she got sick and then David got sick and then we had brought the food back home with us. So, you know, he's sleeping and it's just me and Solace. So I warm up the food. I, I, I'm trying. I attempted to feed it to Solace um, as I was eating it myself, and she just wasn't interested in it. So, um, so she ended up like she was fine. But then I ended up. Not, I didn't get as sick as David did. I think our stomachs obviously just react differently. Um, so I didn't get as, as sick as he did. But I was definitely not in a comfortable place so we realized that it was it was the chinese food you know for all you single people out there who are contemplating marriage um or maybe who are in a relationship right you've been in for a while you're not sure if you want to take that next step i want to point out something that jessica did it was very slight of hand but she threw so much shade and talking about, I guess her stomachs just react differently. I mean, we're two I, different I, people. I ate it and I was completely fine. And David I wasn't ate it fine. And I almost, just said that I almost, had my issues. And but he it, almost died. Oh my god! So he's gosh. so weak and inferior and and blah blah blah. See, this is what you have to look forward to. People, this is the petty is what you have to look forward to. The person I exchange vows with, having to hold for better or for worse, kicked me when I was down. This, this is not true. Make sure you make sure. You do pre-marriage counseling. <laughs> we did pre-marriage so counseling. So potential issues like these don't go. They're still going to come. They're they, still going to They don't come get swept up. under the rug. There's I can't believe. I don't even understand uh, why you were going our, out I of. I guess our, our stomachs react differently. <laughs> I'm not a you're vomiter. Like, that's, I'll just say it like that. But the fact oh, that. Not? I, I'm not. I mean, that's when I mix <laughs> champagne and liquor. That's different. That's that's say, that's an induced. Our <laughs> our New Year's uh, our New Year's Eve party a couple of years ago would would speak otherwise. That's because I I went from many Jello shots, mixed drink you cocktails. Was, you thought you were twenty one? Is what I the did, problem was. I did, and I was what twenty eight. What year? Yeah, I think I was twenty eight. It was it was bad. Many, no, it was twenty seven. Going on twenty eight. Many years removed from twenty one. Um, You're no longer in your prime. So yeah, I, I guess I I only vomit when it's alcohol related. But um, I'm, there's you you you're one of those people who forced to get offended by things that don't need to bring offense. Uh, anyway, no, I just pick out I pick out your your passive aggressive. Changing shade. the subject, if you notice behind David's head, I've added a little bit of decor. So we've transitioned from our Valentine's decor to our spring slash easter decor so i've got some easter stickers behind his head i've expanded our photo gallery wall so you can see that behind him as well there are some new photos i should have played a game like and taken like two pictures side by side like what's different um i 
re we saw us and I redecorated the tree. So it's got all our Easter and it's bright and it's pink and it's just so festive for the season. So the holiday decor is still going. The tree is still up and now we've transitioned to our Easter tree. So I'm, I just wanted to put that out there. I'm very excited. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm actually very proud of this very festive person that I've become. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good that that's who you've become. We've, you know, we're all locked down, so we got to, we got to find ways to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I'm doing. Old avenues aren't necessarily available. So that's, that's cool. I didn't think that you would, I didn't think you were serious when you proposed the idea, but here we are almost three months into the year and our tree is Stay still up. They woke. It's mostly because he hasn't taken it down. Yeah, I haven't taken it down because it's even even as a fake tree, it's just like I don't want to deal with all it's this. It's a lot. It's a massive. It's the the little the things that um, simulate pine needles, they they just still fall off everywhere. So it's still like cleaning up after, as if you were getting rid of a real tree. So I have no problem leaving it up. It's gonna be up. less work for me. So yeah, that's fine. Okay, that was a really long beat. You can't, we can't we can't have that much silence because not everybody's watching us on YouTube. Sorry, I, I need to, this is my um, this is my medicine. I have to take breaks. Like my voice drink. probably doesn't sound like it normally does because I'm. But no one's ever really concerned about your voice. This, this is true. So this maybe no one will true. notice. So before we get into our main vibe, our pre vibe, so we it's it's no secret that we are into reality love shows i don't know why um because we don't really like reality shows except for chopped chopped something about chopped is very addictive um but there's been a lot going on in the mainstream pandemic love reality tv shows and it's 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 kind of concerning me and working my nerves so you know we're definitely part of the bachelor uh universe so we watch the bachelor we watch the bachelorette as you know so you know we're we're into what season is this, 25 sure we got our first black bachelor matt um he's an all right dude scandal has started to hit so it's like weeks past production he's already picked his boo we don't know we allegedly don't know yet who it is but one of the contestants who is now in the three, three, top three, she, it just came out that, you know, she, did we talk about this? We talked about we this. We did talk about this. Okay. So transitioning from what we already talked about, cause you guys know, I've been calling her antebellum Annie. Um, and Twitter seems to like that. So we're going to call her antebellum Annie. Um, apparently they, they were together. He picked her. They Spoiler broke. alert. Oh, goodness gracious. Sorry. Spoiler alert. My Lord, <laughs> Jessica. Sorry. No, but everybody already knows. No. That's why Chris Harrison was going so hard to defend her because he knew she was the one selected. So people still needed to I like have to, her. Now I have to put spoiler alert on the on the podcast so people don't just stumble into this blindly. It's just so, Anyway, y'all are okay. So inconsiderate. You guys are okay. I promise Terrible. you. So Terrible. Terrible etiquette. It's horrible. This is why we don't do reviews because Jessica just be out here telling the entire thing before the movie comes out or, or like within the first couple of days of a movie being out. Jessica just tell everything about it. All right, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, because I'm getting a little. Okay. So um, it seems they broke up. I guess he, he realized between everything going on and then plus the fact that, you know, she's liked all of these Confederate things and she's low key, probably Confederate herself. Um, her, one of her ancestors is probably a Confederate soldier. Cause that's, that's what they always pride themselves on. Um, so you got that happening in the bachelor world. So then it's like, you switch over to married at first sight, which I expect to be more of a realistic show. Because these people are going in, not for a proposal like The Bachelor, but for marriage. And the show drives me crazy because you'll get into the season. These people have agreed to marry a complete stranger sight unseen. Um, they've probably already cashed their $25,000 checks and signed all the contracts. And then they get into it and they're like, I've been single for so long. I'm just not used to 
having someone with me all the time or someone in my life all the time. And it's like, well, yeah, but you agreed to get married. Like what annoys me about this show is it's, it's, I think we're in season 11 or 12. Um, they're in Atlanta, which is probably one of the worst cities to, to do a dating show in. It, it's just Atlanta is not the city for, in my opinion, for relationship. You bring your relationship to Atlanta. If you live in Atlanta, you find your relationship somewhere else and then you relocate that person to you. But I don't know that one should go to Atlanta anticipating finding love. It's just Atlanta is not a love city, in my opinion. Just my opinion. So you've got these people who are so confused about the fact that they are married to someone and what marriage is about, which annoys me because again, the show has been on for 12 seasons for you to sign up for the show. I would assume you would do your research and you would go and watch other seasons and kind of understand what other people went through in the marriage process so that you, you expect, you know what to expect when you come into it. So it's really annoying to me when people are just kind of like, I wasn't expecting this. What were you expecting? Because marriage is committing your life to someone. You move in together. You, you, you merge your finances, all of that wonderful stuff. So it blows my mind. And I, I, every time I watch the show, I'm like, I totally could have been on the show. I totally could have handled it. Like I would have been great on the show, but then I have to remind myself that I'm watching it from the biased perspective of a married person who understands what goes into marriage. So I don't know if at 23, 24, if I married a complete stranger, how that would have been. But that is just something that I've had inside of me boiling that I wanted to get out because I'm tired of these people coming on these reality shows and not understanding the premise of the reality show that they chose to come on. So that's just, that's just it. Uh, marriage, marriage is, is work and it's going to be more work for people who don't know each other. But if you go into this and you are of like, like, I just don't understand the people who go into it and you know, just stop trying or don't try. But in their whole introduction videos, they're like, I'm tired of dating. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of people playing games with me. I'm tired of getting my heart broken, blah, 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 blah. It drives me crazy. But then you got this guy. Are you going to say anything? Cause I'm just, I mean, you're, you're kind of going. So <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself. Um, but you're talking you've got, to, if <laughs> talking to the vibe tribe. That's I am. Talking. I am talking to the vibe tribe. So if you do watch Married at First, if you don't watch Married at First Sight, definitely jump on it. It's it's one of those secretly good reality shows. And what you will find, especially this season, is this gentleman. He's not a gentleman. This dude named Chris, who is probably, if you scrape down and you get to the scum of the earth, he's what's under the scum of the earth. So. Don't be like that. Oh, he's bad. Don't be like that. Let me tell y'all why he's under the scum of the earth. Because he had, first of all, when they put his name on the screen, it says blessed with dollar signs instead of S's. So that's a red flag in itself, if, if there is any to be. He initially said he wasn't attracted to his wife after he married her. Um, he said this to her after having sex with her twice said he didn't find her attractive. So, yeah, that's a way to kill a woman's self-esteem. Like that's but bless Paige's heart. She was like, "God doesn't give us more than we can handle," which is a whole nother topic for a whole nother day cuz I do not agree with her and her foolishness. Um they're, you know, getting they're in the honeymoon, they go to Vegas with all the other couples. Turns out allegedly his ex-girl his ex-fiance calls him and is says she's six weeks pregnant. So here and then here's little Paige just just taking it. So what I really want to get to is y'all, you can't go into relationships insecure and broken. You can't go on to shows like Married at First Sight insecure and broken because people will people will take advantage of that. And you won't get what you need and what you want from a relationship regardless of its foundation, if you are insecure and broken. And she is, this man is literally just puppeting her and taking advantage of her and seeing the, I I don't want to say the word weakness, but he is able to manipulate her insecurities 
and he is it, he's like a fungus and he's feeding off of her insecurities and he is controlling her emotional responses to things and he knows what to say to get her to smile and feel like special and that's that's not fair so it's not fair to her but it's also not like it's not fair to him that i don't i'm just bothered by the whole the couple so i need someone else to give some feedback regarding your opinion on married at first sight especially this season because the last season that took place in new orleans was all about team black love and i mean it ended on such a beautiful note all the black couples stayed together they worked through it you had these strong beautiful secure women who were just beautiful depictions of single black women who are ready to commit to marriage who are secure in themselves and they were able to build great partnerships so i'm really upset that they went from that greatness of new orleans to just the tragedy of what atlanta seems to be uh it's just it's just why they have to be beautiful strong independent black women why can't they just be beautiful strong independent women jessica because they're black you know we don't have a love for we don't have heart. A, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have a hate problem. We don't have, what, what is it? I, I don't know. Jizzle would always say it asking me. We don't, we don't have a... Oh, I can't even remember it, man. It's, I'm messed up. We don't up. have a hate problem. We have a, a, a heart problem. No, we don't have a race problem. We have a heart problem. You learn how to love people regardless of the color of their from? skin. I, don't, I feel like it's, it's an uh, amalgamation of uh, different... Uh, responses I've seen, <clears throat> excuse oh, me, in various like Facebook posts uh, on on the web. Oh, so it, you added the accent? Yeah, I, I, the <laughs> accent is, is all me. That's just creative liberties at work. Um, oh my goodness! But yes, they need, are. We need to love. One, I didn't say independent, but they are well, strong, I, secure black women. And no, I, they are. I'm just, I, I just, I I'm just, just like to acknowledge that because you wanted me to say something, so I figured I'd be silly. Thank you. Please be silly. But the reason the reason why I, I wanted to emphasize that is simply because I feel producers, television shows go out of their way to depict black women and men, black people in a certain light. And I think Chris and Paige are the epitome of the depiction that society prefers to see because People would be up, people are already up in arms with how Paige is being treated, but it's almost okay. If Paige was white, it would be like, it's almost as if there's an, an unspoken understanding that black women, it's okay for them to be treated a certain way, whereas women of other races are not. And they're, they're, they're more delicate, they're more fragile. You're supposed to cater to them differently so that's something that that really bothers me he's the epitome of what people stereotypically assume when they think of black men you know here you are you just got married and now your ex is pregnant and so that, it's just that that unnecessary chaos that has been put into the media and and Put into our minds that we've gotten accustomed to that and you know Paige is feeding into that because she's allowing herself to be treated a certain way instead of standing up for herself and saying look this I mean, if you if you're going to be constantly dropping like God wouldn't give you more than if you're going to keep saying that like you need to walk that and you just you need to like you can't use God as your scapegoat in this type of situation at some point God's like stop dropping my name and do something about it and Chris is just He's just a like, he's just an ass. And I am not, I just don't like, there are many, there are millions of good black men out there. And <laughs> just, you just wait. And, and for Chris to one, have to rep represent Atlanta, like y'all should be disappointed that this is your representative. Um, Cause he's like Carlton from Love is Blind. Um, he's a narcissist. He's manipulative. He, I could go on and on bashing him, but I just, you know, this is not a long podcast. Yeah, we need to uh, you know, tone down the rhetoric. Tone down the rhetoric. We need to be. Let let him come for me. No, we need to be slamming. Um, so that that's just how I feel. Black man, it's Black History Month. Let's okay. not do this anyway. No, Black History Month. I'm gonna call out the bad ones. He's not bad. He's just misguided. 
Anyway, uh, so he's just, he's to me, he's just no, a he's, terrible. He's, he's really wild. He's enough. trash. Um, yeah, he's trash. And I, he's probably doing it all for clout. And it's annoying that someone's heart is in the crossfires for this. And I hope he gets no deals, no nothing at the conclusion of this because he doesn't deserve it. I'll let y'all know this is peppermint oil. It's not anything, CBD anything or else. anything. Fancy. Like I don't want to be like, why is he sniffing? Actually, it's eucalyptus oil. I couldn't yeah, find whatever. the peppermint oil. Oh. Well, at least I, I know I don't have COVID because I can still smell. <laughs> so it's not it's not the 19. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it was a, little, a graphic warning. But earlier this evening, I I had to uh, throw up, and I, it was the it was a rough kind that kind of comes out of your nose. So I've been smelling vomit literally for like the last six hours. So uh, I mean, I can't can't get away from it. Um, so, so that's why I'm. I told him to sniff. I'll be sniffing these lines over here. Blurred lines. So I think we're at a good good stopping point, and we'll uh, we'll be back with our uh, with my <laughs> Jessica's main topic. All right, see you on the bit. All right, we are back. We're back, both of us in the flesh. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. So recently, I've really gotten into clubhouse which i didn't know if you were it's only accessible to iphone users so it's as uh, it should be yeah it's about time y'all left your job oh, you peasants with androids get out of here <laughs> you know how disappointing it is when i text someone for the first time and it's green, green. Bubble, yeah. like and it's always like i lose levels of respect for you because it's like wow i thought you were and y'all how messed up i might just sniff this microphone <laughs> there was the oil we need to hurry up okay okay um so I just got into Clubhouse. I, actually, I've been on Clubhouse for a few months now. Somebody had posted it on I, an IG story, so I was like, "Let me just let me just figure out what this Clubhouse thing is." I had no clue what it was. I downloaded it, and then I I think I applied, and some random woman, except like, brought me into the club. Thank you. Don't know her. Probably she's gonna come back in years and be like, "Remember that one time I let you into Clubhouse?" So. I'm preparing for that. But I didn't know what to do with the app. I, I would accidentally get into rooms because Sovereign would be playing with my phone when the notification would come. And then I would just hear talking and I didn't, I just, I had no understanding. So fortunately, my my cousin Georgia is on on the app and she, 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 I think she's borderline Gen Z. She doesn't want to acknowledge that she's Gen Z, but I think she is Gen Z. Uh, so she kind of keeps me up to date with things. So she was like, are you on Clubhouse? And I was like, I have it, but I don't know what to, like, what am I supposed to do with it? So she kind of broke it down. She was like, it's still in its early stages, but, you know, it's probably going to get hot. So I was like, cool, I won't delete it. I'll keep it on there. So I get notifications all the time. And I happen to be, I think one day I was just using my phone. God, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I just chugged like half of that LaCroix in the break. So it's, it's just acid. Um, I happen to be, you know, I think Savi was asleep and Salas was in school. David was somewhere and I got the notification and it said foodies, uh, feta pot, TikTok feta pasta. So I was like, okay, like I'm a foodie and I've been making the feta pasta long before it started trending on TikTok. Everybody's late. Trendsetters are. Uh, everybody is late. Uh, even my cu- even Georgia was like, uh, these people are making it. It doesn't even look good. And a lot of you are making it, and it doesn't look good because you are not seasoning. And seasoning is key. We'll go over the recipe later, but seasoning is vital to having any meal be successful. So I jumped in the room ha- again, having no clue what I was doing. And there were a few people. There was a moderator, a few people speaking. And there was anyone, you know, have any tips? So I just kind of jumped in and started talking. And it was actually a lot of fun. So from there, it was like, okay, I got my first high. So now I just got to I got to chase the next one and see if I can get higher. So I've been, you know, monitoring clubhouses and seeing the notifications and hopping into some um, like there's this one Afropolitan. It's like African first gen, like Africans in America, African-Americans, just a merger. Like they were doing like some dating one uh, where they were like trying to match people up and they were doing a dating game off of profile oh, you pictures. Into that one? I did not mm. by not on purpose, oh, and yeah. <laughs> my profile like it's. I'm, now you know. Now you know why she didn't know where I was because she, she didn't care. That was a different day. That was the next day. Um, She's trying to get so her flirt on. My point is, it's actually a pretty cool platform, and I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to go viral on Clubhouse. 
it doesn't seem like the type of app that you could just yet can go viral. Um, but that might be the move. Like there are TikTok stars. It might be time to like try to figure out how to be a clubhouse star. So that might be on my radar. Maybe we'll do a Rush Vibes clubhouse. But anyway, so I had screenshot the the picture of me in the room with all the other people talking about it. And I posted it on IG and I got into this Facebook conversation through my stories with an old, with a, uh, an acquaintance from college. And I was going to say friend, but we're not like, like we didn't really rock like that, but we, we knew each other. What's his name? Her. Yeah, I better be. So she was, she, she had replied and she was like, Oh, I wish I was in that. I wish I had been in that room. And I was like, yeah, it was my first one. I enjoyed it. Blah, blah, blah. And she she had said she needed, she was big on clubhouse, but she needed to take a break from it because it was overwhelming. So I was like, like, in what way? Cause I didn't know if there were like some secret club rooms that I like that just gets wild and I'm not ready for it. So I want to be prepared. And she was just saying, you know, everybody just thinks they know everything. So like we were kind of going through the flows of that conversation and I said, you know, I, I kind of get what you mean and just information overload and she couldn't take it anymore. So she deleted the app. So, you know, at times I feel that way about TikTok, which I wasn't on. And a friend of mine works for TikTok and we went to brunch and she talked me into TikToking. So I haven't posted anything, but I'm just, you know, cycling through and I'm absorbing a lot of knowledge and so much information that I'm just like, I, I need to know all of this, but I don't have the capacity to know all of this or to do something with all of this. So it got me thinking about how social media has been great. It's exposed a lot of people to knowledge that they didn't have, but it's also given people a platform and a means to be a specialist or to special ooh, to specialize in things that they possibly know nothing about and I, then I started thinking about how dangerous that is you know there are life coaches there are dietary coaches there I mean you can find coaches and specialists and support groups and all of this but there's really no way to genuinely regulate the information that's going out there and it can put you in a dangerous place, dangerous place. Cause if you are a vulnerable in person who, you know, you're eager to take in information, you need that support, getting it from the wrong source can put you in a, in the bad place. So I guess I kind of just wanted to free flow and talk about what your thoughts on that are, because everyone does deserve, you know, everyone deserve has a voice. Everyone has an opinion. And, you know, a lot of us like to voice that opinion. I mean, look at us here. We are, voicing our opinions on things but at times not everyone should so what is that where, where does that put the, put us what does that mean what is what does it do for society that we have access to saying anything on our mind at any given time without really being held accountable <laughs> So I think, uh, yes, we, we definitely live in a time where anyone can make a TikTok account or once again, invite a clubhouse account or Facebook or whatever and go viral or, uh, pose as a subject matter expert. Um, but just as much as that's a reality, so is the fact that probably like 99% of the things that are going to be discussed on those, on those, uh, in those venues can be like Googled or, or fact checked pretty mm -hmm. easily. Now it's on each independent person who's hearing this information, receiving it to say, okay, well, let me go, let me see if I can, you know, cross reference or corroborate this in some way. But, you know, I, I think yet and still whether, whether we believe something or whether we're, uh, gullible, um, and just take things as they're, as they're given to us. I think it's on each individual person to, to make sure that, you know, they're, they're verifying what they're hearing because it is difficult to know, you know, how truthful someone is. And yeah, there's, you know, I, um, I recently joined Clubhouse, uh, Elon Musk was going to be on there, uh, or was on there a few weeks ago and I decided to join cause I wanted to be in in the room where it happened. 
<laughs> but uh, I ended up falling asleep because they said 10 o'clock and I realized they meant 10 o'clock Pacific time, which is just way beyond my bedtime. Mm-hmm. So I didn't make it. But um, uh, someone who I'm actually uh, an, an acquaintance, I guess, uh, and a Facebook friend of mine, I guess, is on there and somehow was notified of my request to join the app. And, you know, he he provided me an invite. Um, so I see he's in there uh, regularly and sometimes he's leading uh, rooms and sometimes he's, you know, just assisting, but he's, he's normally one of the ones speaking in it. And, um, and the rooms are, I mean, they're packed. I mean, I think one thing that the app itself has benefited from is the fact that a lot of us are just at home and we, you know, we're, it's, it's very much a, a pandemic app, I believe. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what, how its popularity is affected once the world opens back up a little bit and people kind of go back to their ordinary lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of dangerous with people being able to, um, build platforms and then just kind of go unchecked in terms of their, uh, the, the advice, I guess that they give, like I follow a lot of financial Twitter and, um, they're always making fun of these random people who get on like TikToks that go like viral because they're like, Oh, I made X amount of dollars doing stock options trading, or, um, you know, I made this much money in the the stock market and they make it seem so easy. And um, that's just it's just kind of dangerous because you could have, you know, a situation where um, people just they're just trading blindly or investing blindly mm-hmm. uh, because there's not a lot of fundamental or technical um, research or analysis done behind a lot of these this advice that's being given out. So it's uh, definitely dangerous. But, you know, it's just like I said, it's up. It's up to each individual person to, um, you know, take what they hear with a grain of salt until they can kind of like verify because, I mean, YouTube is free. Mm-hmm. Google is free. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there are a million different ways to, to get most information that you seek or to uh, verify a lot of the information that you're hearing on these social media. So, um, you know, PSA, just uh, just be careful out there when you're when you're listening to these uh, influencers and whatnot. Uh, circling back to Clubhouse, though, uh, I feel like it's literally just a conference call app. It is. Like, you know, like, you know, the, the, the one, like the one in hundred, like, you know, when you used to have conference calls oh, for like yeah. your little small business pitches and you're like, you know, the little, little, little elevator music. And then you got to get people to dial in. I feel like it's just a conference call app. Um, that, you know, it's all done in real time. There's no recording or and anything like public, that. Cause can you have yes. private rooms? Uh, I think you can have private rooms. Okay. I'm not, I'm not that familiar with the, with the platform. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just interesting how it's just basically just like, conference calls so mm-hmm. you know if you're at work you got conference calls you go to lunch you come back you got more conference calls yeah Zoom. and then you jump on clubhouse because you got more conference calls. more conference calls so yeah very uh very interesting but yeah those are those are my thoughts on it. i'm curious how they're going to make clubhouse lucrative like in what what ways how are they going to implement ads are they going to do you know audio commercials between like before you can get into a room you have to watch an ad um or you're going to have to pay more to get the ad free uh are are they going to get people who host the most rooms to be sponsored by someone so you know if you host a room about a particular topic then you know a partic- a brand might reach out to you and say, you know, we want you to be, you know, our clubhouse ambassador. So I, I'm I'm very curious how with this type because I think it's a great app. I love how it connects people internationally. Uh, I don't maybe they'll add a video component. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear that. I just turned off our space heater. It was keeping my feet a little toasty. I know I was comfortable in there. It got really hot. So. Space heaters. We were talking about how space heaters are so temperamental because it gets. You get too hot, you turn it off, and then you instantly freeze. Uh, but yeah, as as a marketing person who recognizes that you know people aren't watching live TV as much, so you know your the, your ability to take in ads are now limited. So if you watch Netflix, I I have a background in liquor, so I see that a lot of shows that are Netflix original shows. If they have liquor featured in it, it's a Diageo brand. So it's, you know, it's Tanqueray, it's um, Smirnoff, it's Captain Morgan, or, you, or you'll see like the very, the um, Johnny Walker bottles in the background of something, or that's what someone's pouring. So that's how they're finding their way to advertise because, you know, they know people aren't watching TV shows um, on regular cinema. They're, they're, taking it in via an app. So how are we going to influence them? So I'm curious how an app like Clubhouse 
is going to get people to see sponsorship. So I'm wondering if our room's going to be sponsored by brands like this episode, this club hour, whatever is sponsored by LaCroix. Like, I don't know. Uh, so that's just something that I always look for. Uh, I appreciate a new app. This is the first time a new app has come out that I have been a part of. I'm very much so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and that's where I want to stop. I'm not trying to create content for TikTok. That There's just too many dance moves, um, and they're all arm-related, and I'm just not, I'm not, I'm too old for that now. Speaking of too old, a week from this broadcast, I, your girl, uh, I didn't realize you were me, I'm going to be 30 plus one. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. March 2nd. I'm really, really excited. Um, unlike many of my peers, I have not feared aging. I felt like I was in my 20s for an excessively long amount of time. Uh, everyone would, especially be like, man, you're still 20 something. Um, so now I am in my 30s. I didn't get to celebrate 30 the way I had anticipated. I had just had a baby six weeks before. Um, and we were, it was the week before the world shut down. So people were starting to have more conversations and we were realizing, okay, we might have to take this, this coronavirus seriously. Um, so there really wasn't much to do. David took me out. Like we went to dinner, we went to Chima. It was amazing. Uh, I remember getting so full and we came back home to our, our babies. Um, so I was hoping the pandemic was going to be done and clear by now. So it's like, yes, I can go big for 31 to make up for 30. And here we are still wearing masks, still in a pandemic. Um, so I don't know what 30 plus one, I'm just calling it that, uh, has in store. I don't really get much liberty in terms of planning my birthday. Like it's my birthday, but it it's like David's national holiday. Um, David usually takes off work. Like he, he requests my, there have been times where he's requested off on my birthday, but I am still working on my birthday. Day. Um, but David always does something amazing and spectacular. So I haven't even asked him what he's trying to do. Um, I'm just here going with the flow. I'm just excited that, you know, another revolution around the sun is uh, about to commence. Who knows what 31 has? I, I'm I'm kind of going into it low key because I was getting right like i hyped up turning 30 i was like yo i'm gonna turn 30 it's gonna be amazing i'm so excited for 30 new decade new chapter same book ah and then 30 came and so did a global pandemic so i'm like okay i got trust issues i got trust issues so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna take it easy we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna take it step by step so yeah i'm really excited i made an amazon wish list um, because I had made one for both of our kids and, uh, my sister-in-law was like, Hey, you need to make one for yourself. And I know I'm old because it consists of books, houseplants, a humidifier for how do you set. Ship house, huh? How do you ship houseplants? Several of the houseplants that we have have been shipped. Oh, is that why they're all dying? No. <gasps> you scared. That's, that's a joke. I'm sorry. I mean, some of them do require a little bit of rehabilitation, depending on what um, company you ship with. But um, yeah, a few of them I, that we have in the house, and they're thriving. Don't listen to him. Uh, are are from Amazon or from? I w I won a couple from some Instagram contest I was in. So I did plants, a humidifier for my plants, a couple pots, um, candles because I love candles, and I always get a candle on my birthday. So I'm I'm. I, I just added candles. So that's that's pretty much it. I couldn't really, and some things for my office, but I couldn't really think of like what I want. And I think that's just adulting. Like I, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a me. Yeah, I said I'm a me. So, and I, I don't really need for much. Gifts are nice. I'm not going to turn down gifts, but I, I'm not like big needing. So I really was stressed like, going on Amazon. I was really, I was on Pinterest. I was like gift ideas for 31 to put on my own wish list. Cause I couldn't think of what I wanted. 
So that's it. I I'm I'm excited. Thirty one means that. Let me see. I met David when I was twenty. We officially started dating at twenty one when I was twenty one. So it'll be, and it was right after my birthday. It was he took me out, um, after my twenty first birthday, and he bought me some drinks and some food. So it'll be ten years to to the month. That we started dating. I think my the memories on my phone has our first date is March 9th. So yeah. Aw. Hey. Hey boo. Hey boo. Time flies. It does. Ten years. A marriage. A house, a baby, another baby. A pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> so you got? Yeah, I feel like I've babbled. Yeah, you can definitely carry this one. Um that's I'm over, partnership. I'm over here trying not to pass out. You that's, know? So that's if anybody's watching this, you. you can probably see moments where I'm like, so uh, hopefully, like I said, I don't have the 19. We'll see how, how I feel tomorrow when you all will hopefully be watching this. Um, so okay, I assume we're done. So I'm just going to close out. Reminder, uh, March is Mompreneur Month. Mompreneur March. I don't know. Month, March, whatever. Um so we'll be uh, we'll be having a few guests on uh, each week, uh, each each time a different a different guest, uh, just moms who we feel like are really killing it. Um, obviously, as moms, and then um, as as women in in business, be it traditional uh, or, or non traditional in an entrepreneur sense. So uh, really excited. Uh, we'll start doing some advertising for for that coming up pretty soon. Our first guest is someone who. Uh, is very near and dear to our hearts, so we can't wait to to get her uh, on the pod and and learn a little bit more about her. For you all to learn a little bit more about her, because you know we know quite a bit. We've been there for uh, for a lot of a lot of big moments and, and mm-hmm. a couple embarrassing ones too. <laughs> that um, me or me or Jessica have, have played a role in. It won so, me. So, uh, Dia, is definitely stay tuned. And these are obviously going to be our, our first guests, so we're looking forward to seeing how that looks from a production standpoint. So. Thank you all for watching, listening, downloading, subscribing, sharing, liking. Uh, don't forget to, uh, if, you, if this is your first time watching us, or even if it isn't, you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to go ahead and subscribe um, and hit the hit the like button because that'll obviously help us in terms of um, content. Um, where am I looking for? Uh, Cultivation, colonization, uh, spreading, uh, word. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll help people find us if yeah. you if people like uh, who you who may follow you or be friends with you. Algorithm, uh, algorithm. Yes, yeah, so it help us in the algorithm. Goodness gracious! Uh, and same for what you know, whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. I'll be sure to leave a review and um, and leave a, a five star rating, preferably. Um, connect with us on social media, and if you want to support the the channel, you can. We're on Cash App at uh, dollar sign or USHDVIBES on Cash App. And that's Rush Vibes. So. Um, we thank you guys. Uh, this is episode 13, I believe. Lucky number 13. Lucky number 13. So uh, this has been quite a journey. We've definitely gotten more comfortable the more we've done. Um, and and we've, we've gotten feedback from, uh, from from people who listen to us. So we, we appreciate you guys for watching, listening, and, and supporting. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, uh, looking forward to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna come back healthier yeah, next come time. Back, come back, come over, be healthy, healthier on the next on the next one. So uh, thank you guys uh, so much. We we truly, really, truly appreciate uh, all of you, and we can't wait to see uh, where we go from here. So with that being said, I am David. I'm Jess. This is Rush Vibes. Vaccines are out and, and being distributed, but we're still in a pandemic. So wear a mask, wash your hands, social distance. Be safe. Uh, be well. Mind your privilege. <laughs> Mind your privilege. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Later. Bye. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I can't wait too far. Stop me now.